I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. This video will attract enemies to me, but it will save lives. I want to talk about dangerous people in the church. Dangerous people in the church. I've been a Christian since 1986 when I got born again during my NYSC year. I got born again as a medical doctor. I had read and read a lot of things about religion and mysticism before I became a Christian. And so when I sit in the church, I am very analytical. I don't get carried away. I am usually very calm. There are very few testimonies that are shared on television as healings and deliverance that I did not personally experience in my hospital and ministry. And in my life, I am AS. My wife is AS. My, my genotype was tested in the University College Hospital in 1983 stroke 84. My wife's son was tested in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital in 1984. We got married December 6th, 1985. I had my first child January, January 1986 because my wife was pregnant before I married her. I was not a Christian then. I had another child in 1987. I had another child in 1988. I have a very beautiful wife. So I was going to Jerusalem often and often. I was climbing Mount Olives anyhow. Then I gave a gap of eight years and had another child in 1996. The one in 1996 is AA. The remaining, the first three are AS, AS, AS. We did not have any sickler contrary to scientific permutations. My wife is a nurse midwife. So I've seen the hand of God in my life. My second child and my daughter, who is my daughter, stopped breathing in the hospital. I was the medical director of that hospital. Then typhoid was very rare. She stopped breathing. It was before I went to call my bishop, Bishop Dan, a year of blessed memory of the Church of God mission. It was my patient, my patient, a Christian. We call her Papa Mbakala. He was from Kanafun that laid hands on my daughter and prayed. And my daughter sneezed and came back to life. So I saw my daughter raised from the land of the of, of death to life. In one of my videos, I told you, I, I, I prayed and asked God, if you still heal people, heal this fecal fistula, was healed. I've prayed for people and I saw SS converted to AC genotype. All kinds of deliverance and healings. I prayed for patients that were referred from Queen Elizabeth Hospital to my hospital. The girl was paralyzed. She stood up and walked. She's from the Okoro family in Mbausi. I prayed for all kinds of people and I saw mighty healing. So fake prophets or non-fake prophets cannot shake my faith in the healing power of God and in the deliverance that God can give to people. I saw people, girls behave like dogs in my office, bite their people, their bodies during deliverance. But a time came, I found out that a lot of these people you conduct deliverance from, they come back or run to another church with different manifestations again. And I found out that people were coming to my meetings because of the manifestation of the power of God. And they were not willing to learn. Oh, go to the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International at Abba. Ask those who were there when I was preaching. Go to CPM OG Killing. Ask people in the Church of God mission. The cameraman, if he's looking at me, we fall down with the camera. 
People were falling all over the place. But after falling, what next? So, I want to talk about dangerous people in the church. One of the denominations I preached in in those days, where my brother is a bishop, there was a woman um, who had schizophrenia, mental issue. And she was delivered by Victoria Eto of Blessed Memory. And hurriedly, she became, was made an evangelist, got married to a pastor. Some years later, she started accusing people of witchcraft, of different things in the church. And stupid Christians, Christians, most Christians behave stupidly. They don't reason. They don't know. They just jump to conclusions. I am not a fan of T.B. Joshua. There's nothing he was doing there that I didn't see manifest in my ministry as a deacon, not as an ordained clergyman, as a deacon. Okay, a deacon is an ordained clergyman. Papa Idaos ordained me a deacon. Bishop Edo has ordained me as a pastor. There was, there's nothing T.B. Joshua was doing that I didn't see. So I didn't, I was not bothered whether it was fake or not fake. I was more interested in the fact that in Nigeria, at least, even if he were, uh, Paul said, if people preach out of contention, let Christ be preached. I don't give a damn who is preaching and what somebody is preaching. All I'm interested in is let Christ be preached. Let people get born again. Whoever is deceived, let him be deceived. So, this woman started accusing every person. The church split into two. Two of my brothers were the leadership. In the, one went and opened another one, a medical doctor. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And another branch opened. Now, I told them that that woman was suffering from a relapse of her schizophrenia. She was mad again. And finally, I was proven right. There are mad people in the church. When you see somebody that deliverance has been done for, and uh, he, he came with bizarre testimony, be very, very careful, extremely careful. A lot of the people that BBC interviewed were people with questionable characters. There was one that slept with the king of Zulu. He, she came here and said that she slept with T.B. Joshua or one other person there. She said, Harlot, and the spirit of Harlotry has not left her. She does not believe in God. I'm not defending T.B. Joshua. I'm just warning you to be very careful. If you pick a girl from the streets as a harlot and you minister deliverance to her and you rehabilitate her, pastor, church, settle her away from your men. She will sleep with your boys. She will sleep with your pastor. Young man, if you are ministering deliverance to a girl, when you pray one, two, three, five, ten minutes, the girl is not getting healed or the demon is not living. Send her away. Send her away. Send her away. And you must not pray for a woman alone. Always have a chaperon. She's called a chaperon. Have people around you. The next thing is that there are young men who come to church with bizarre testimonies. Oh, and usually they come with testimonies of persecution, how they've suffered, how they converted from Islam into Christianity. Some of these people are agents. They never really change. They never really change. And then you see them, they, they, they mix with the girls, sleep with our girls, mess them up, and eventually create problems. When you hear an individual who comes from one church, and starts criticizing the other pastor, condemning the other system, he too or she will also condemn you. There is an anger and a dissatisfaction and inadequacy in that person that no church can satisfy. When you see a pastor who has worked with this bishop, worked with this bishop, worked with this ministry, worked with this ministry, fear that person. There is no big pastor in Nigeria, prominent pastor, that I have not had people who worked with them come and tell me stories about them. And I always keep them at a distance. 
I always tell myself, this one telling stories about that man of God will carry stories about me away. So I stay far from them. I help them from a distance. Any man that tells you stories about another man of God will also come and tell you. I saw uh, contrary videos of all those people in the BBC interview apologizing for their rebellion, their misbehavior, and all that. Listen, church is like a hospital. There are hospital infections. There are mad people there. There are people with tuberculosis. If you don't take time, you can be infected. Go to church and look for Christ. Another group of dangerous people in the church is those who take the naivety of church people to exploit them. They will come, borrow money from the rich. They know the rich. They will just target. As you are sharing testimonies, they are targeting you. You will see them. They will come close to you. Before you know it, they are bringing one fantastic business idea. You invest and they will disappear or disappoint you. I have seen it over and over again. Most people who come to church for help, they are the same people who will criticize people, criticize church. They are never, ever satisfied. When you see a character flaw, in fact, deliverance doesn't affect character. It removes the spirit. But when that spirit goes away, if it is not replaced with the word of God, it is not replaced with knowledge, it is not replaced with the spirit of God, it is not replaced with responsibility and purpose, the person becomes a more wicked person because seven more wicked demons will join that person. When you see women, you see women in church, very flamboyant, dressed sexily, please beware, even if they are married, even if they are married, if I know what I'm talking about. I have never committed adultery in the past 39 years I've been married, but I know women, if I make my finger like this, they will sleep with me. So I made a video before and I told you I suffer from gynophobia. I fear women. I fear women. When another set of women you must fear are widows, young widows, young widows. They will come near you. Mommy, mommy, mommy. They will mummify you. Daddy, daddy. They will deaden you. I keep them at a distance. If a woman needs help, go and meet my wife. God, they don't come near me. Go and meet my wife. If you were serving an idol before, if I preach to you and you get in, I will send you to one other church. I don't run church. I don't run church because I don't trust people. There are dangerous people in the church. And each of you that goes to church, each of you as a pastor, pastors, they just open their hearts and open their lives for every person. As I'm talking to you now, I know the dangerous people around me. I know them. They are very close to me. I know them. I eat with some of them. I travel. With, I, 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 I dine with them. I share things with them. But I deliberately sometimes share only what they cannot use to harm me. It's the church folks. I am a Christian. I am a preacher. I will ever remain a Christian because I came from an idolatrous background. I very idolatrous background. I was a very badly bad boy. I did not become a cultist because only me, I was a cult. The day I smoked cannabis sativa, Indian hemp, it did not shock me. My, my normal brain is, is very aggressive, very aggressive. When I got born again, and my friend, Dr. Kingsley OJ of Chewendu Hospital, our mama, I told him that now that you are born again, if every other person falls away from the faith, don't fall. Me, I will not fall. No man shall and must dissuade you from the knowledge of Christ and the things you have handled. So be very careful. In church, you will see people come and share fantastic testimonies. They that, that. be careful. They will come with fantastic business. There was one recently. Uh, um, that collected people's machimak group. 
And Christians are so stupid, they will just be running around. They will not reason. What are you selling? What are you producing? What results? What is your background? At least I have a medical background. At least I, I ran my own hospital. At least I opened a school for the Church of God Mission in Abba. And in two years, it was richer than the church. In 20 years, it was one of the 50 best schools in the country. I have a background. I have a reputation. You will just see people without background come and start deceiving church people to invest. And then people's monies will get lost. All the properties people have bought from me, their papers are with me. They are, their land are secure. I have a reputation to protect. Somebody comes into church. Most of the people who BBC interviewed, stupid human beings that don't have anything to offer. They don't have any background. And the BBC, as an organization, has lacked integrity in whatever they did now. Because they did not go and interview those who had stayed there for several years. For me, as a Nigerian, as a Nigerian, I know the Western media. Anything a Nigerian does, they want to bring him down. They want to destroy anything concerning Nigeria. Anything. They want to bring, no, BBC, VOA, and whatever. They will never tell you that Nigerian families in the United States are the most educated families. They will never tell you that the best results in Howard University all over the world are made by Nigerians. They will never tell you that we are the most enterprising people in the world. When a criminal is arrested somewhere, maybe he's carrying a Nigerian passport and he's not even a Nigerian, they will just blow it. They have over the years, over the years, deliberately denigrated my country. They've deliberately denigrated my country. VOA, BBC, Al Jazeera, all of them. The criminality and the murder rate in America is more than Nigeria. Even in the UK, the bribery and the corruption and the misbehavior, including the royal family, is more than Nigeria. More than Nigeria. One out of every black human being on earth is a Nigerian. We are 20% of the black race. So when you see by, by mathematical distribution, we are likely to be involved in more things than any other black race. I see, for me, I see that the attack on TB Joshua, I don't, I'm not his fan. I've never, I don't, I'm not his fan. I'm not a fan of any preacher in Nigeria. I'm not a fan of any preacher in Nigeria. I grew up under the Archbishop Benson Idahosa, and I think that he is the peak of ministry so far in the last years in this country, last many years in this country. Now, he has his flaws, but he is an epitome of standard good ministry. Now, the BBC intentionally, and when they finish with TB Joshua, they will face Oyedepo. They will face Adeboye. They will face Chris Oyakilome. They will face you one after the other. Don't out of jealousy and anger start celebrating that TB Joshua was brought down. I am a medical doctor. TB Joshua is not a medical doctor. So there's not, I don't, I'm, and I don't need to be jealous of him. I've seen the kind of miracles he's doing, as I told you earlier on. I don't need to be jealous of him. I'm comfortable. I, this is, I'm doing what I, I wrote. I've written more books than him. There's hardly a Nigerian preacher that has written more books than me. So I'm not jealous of any person, but I want to tell Nigerians, do not celebrate the fall of a man, particularly a dead man. Particularly a dead man. Let's allow that man rest. If he was doing fake miracles, why were people trooping there? The fake miracles, he went to different countries. So BBC, you didn't reason. He went to Brazil, went to different places. Did he arrange those miracles there? Don't you reason? Is his building the first building to collapse? Other buildings have collapsed in different nations. Disaster has happened to different people in the world. Right had Bunker Crusade in uh, Benin. People died in several places. You didn't carry it. You didn't carry it. Church is a dangerous place, particularly you in leadership. 
I know a pastor's wife that a member slept with 11 times. You had the effrontery and the insanity to sleep with a pastor's wife. Seducer. Church is a dangerous place. But I still remain your friend. <laughs> Dr. Charles Apoki. We are stripping things bare. This, is, this year is the year of facing reality. Church is a dangerous place. Forget me. Oh, if I go to church, all this emotional worship. Hey, they don't enter my head. I stay. In fact, the hymns, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Fade in a way like the stars of the morning. They make more sense to me than all this your emotionalism and nonsense blues you sing. I want more of you. No, I don't want to. Jesus is not your boyfriend. The one he gave to you before, what did you do with him? So let's sit down. Forget TB Joshua, forget BBC, and build and help and, and work with God to build his church. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Send me a message on plus 2347052136763. Listen, the white man never likes a black man that does well. God bless you.